The Phoenix Suns are now down 3-2 in the NBA Finals, and statistically, teams that win Game 5 after the series being tied 2-2 win 72% of the time in the NBA Finals. So the odds are pretty heavily stacked against Phoenix at this point. I imagine that percentage is even higher if the team that won Game 5 did so on the opposing team's home floor. So that begs the question, are the Phoenix Suns screwed? Are they inevitably going to end up being in second place? Or is there some stuff they can do so they can turn the odds back in their favor and win this series? Let's talk about it. Before I continue on with this video, about half of the people that watch these videos are not subscribed, so if you fall into that 50%, then please subscribe. I am trying to hit 200k on this channel by the end of the year, so I would really appreciate it. Also, drop a like on this video. It only takes one second and makes a massive difference. Also, real quick, once again, I'm going to promote my uh, Greg Popovich deep dive that is about 45 minutes long and the best video that I have ever made, in my opinion. That video is available now on Patreon, or you can wait a couple of days and it will be released after either game six or game seven just depending on how far the series goes but that link is going to be in the description if you want to pay three dollars and see it early all right so what exactly has gone wrong for phoenix in the last three games of this series well in game three devin booker was just incredibly bad and for the bucks both middleton and drew holiday were actually not bad unlike the first two games game four was a little bit different because instead of being really bad devin booker was really good as he dropped 40 points, but likewise Chris Middleton, who had been bad to that point outside of just an okay game three, had 40 points himself. And despite Booker having this 40 point game, the team's overall offense got relatively stagnant and Chris Paul didn't really do that much. It was his worst game of the series by far. Game five, once again, Booker dropped a 40 piece, but once again, the offense was kind of stagnant, not very motion heavy, and Chris Paul was not good up until the last quarter of the game. Oh, and once again, they got torched by Middleton, but then they also got torched by Drew Holiday, and Chris Paul did not play good defense on Drew Holiday. So overall, what has been wrong? Well, their offense has just not looked the same as it did in the first two games. The offense has been very ISO heavy, very stagnant, not a lot of open shots, relying upon hitting a lot of difficult shots like Devin Booker has been doing, but still, at a certain point, if you have to take 30 contested mid-range pull-ups, you're ultimately giving that a win to the defense. One of the reasons for this stagnant offense is that Chris Paul seems to have disappeared. He's not outright been bad, but he hasn't really asserted himself at all as he did in the first two games. And as a result, the offense has been pretty much entirely reliant on Devin Booker to bail them out, which is not a good position to be in. And then on top of that, both Middleton and Holiday, unlike the first two games, have been relatively good. Holiday was terrible in game four again, but he was good in game three, great in game five, and Middleton has been good throughout the last three games. The first two, they were both painfully terrible. The Bucks have not been nearly as dead in the water as they were in the first two games. The first game, Giannis didn't play as amazing because he was still recovering from his injury and not playing the last few games. Game two, he was amazing, but still everybody else sucked. And really, it seemed like they were getting ready to lay down and die. And a lot of people thought that's what was coming next. But as it turns out, they actually swung back, which is not something they were prone to do in the past, but they pulled off this time. Chris Paul just simply has to be better. That's really the main reason why this series has gone the way that it has. In the first two games, he averaged 27.5 points, 8.5 assists on 67% true shooting. In the last three, 16.7 points, 9 assists on 57% true shooting. So... 
10 less points per game on 10% worse efficiency in the last three games versus the first two. Now, I realize that by comparison to his regular season numbers, Chris Paul has been relatively similar in the last three games to the regular season. However, we have seen Chris Paul step up in the playoffs at this point, especially in the Nuggets series, especially in the first two games of this series. And in order for the Suns to overcome this Bucks team, Paul really has to play at that superstar level in order for them to do that and that's why they won the first two games because he was doing that while Booker was good while Aiden was good and while their motion offense was working and even that wasn't like a dominating lead in those games so Chris Paul can't afford to not be great in order for them to win this series he has to go above and beyond being that the Bucks have the best player in this series and they have more weapons overall and a little bit better weapons so Chris Chris Paul has to outperform his typical ability at this age in order for them to win. Now, I'm not going to be as critical of Chris Paul as many people have been, especially on Twitter where people are saying some outlandish shit right now, but he does need to be better. I don't think it's necessarily that much of a knock because his stats in the last three games have not been terrible, but his presence has not been felt, and the reason they were winning before is that his presence was very much felt. It really is as simple as he just needs to be better. That is really the main reason why this series has swung in Milwaukee's favor. Another thing is his defense on Drew Holiday was really bad in Game 5. He got lost on him off-ball quite a bit. Now, Drew did make a lot of difficult shots, and I'll give him that, but honestly, it's at the point where I think maybe next time, if you see that Drew Holiday is having a good game, you probably switch that matchup. I think part of the reason that Paul has struggled on offense and really the Suns offense overall has stagnated is because it feels like the Suns are running less pick and roll. Now, I can't find the actual stats for that. I'm sure it exists somewhere, but I can tell you right now just from the eye test, their pick and roll has been very minimal. It's really devolved into perimeter isolation and a couple of catch and shoots for like Jay Crowder and Mikhail Bridges. One of the main reasons for that, one of the main catalysts has to be Giannis at the five because he is much better at defending the pick and roll than Brooke Lopez has been. When they had Brooke Lopez in game five, they ran some pick and roll and the Booker got a couple of open shots as a result of that. But I do think they've been running it less because Giannis at the five has been more and more prevalent as this series has gone on, and he's really good at defending that. But even when Brook Lopez has been on the floor, I don't think they've been attacking him in the pick and roll to nearly the degree that they should be. Chris Paul would get quite a few open opportunities out of that if they actually did that, but they've seemed to shy away from that offense. And also as a result of that, DeAndre Ayton has not been quite as electric as he had been in the first three rounds of the playoffs. He's averaging basically the same points and rebounds as he did in the three rounds previous to this. However, he is doing so on a 13% worse shooting. And I can say just overall, the offense has not come nearly as easy to him as it had in the first three rounds where he was shooting 70% from the field. Ayan has been taking a lot of mid-range shots, especially in game three and game four. And I think the Bucks are gonna be okay with that. It's not a shot that he is terrible at, but at the same time, if he's taken mid-range shots, I think that's showing you that his offense is not coming as easy as it was previous. Another thing is Chris Paul's minutes. Everyone else's minutes has been pretty much understandable on the Sun side of things, but Chris is averaging just 37 minutes per game, which for a regular season is a lot, but in the finals, your starters, and especially a guy who at the very least is the second best player on your team, should be playing at least 40 minutes per game like Devin Booker and DeAndre Ayton have been. Now, this could be an age factor, it could be a risk of injury factor, but ultimately, if there is any time to overwork your players, it is the NBA Finals, and that's why Booker and Ayton are averaging 40. So, that needs to be adjusted if that's possible. If it's not, then that's a problem in itself, but I really feel like Chris is capable of averaging 40 minutes per game, and those couple of minutes really make quite a big difference because there was a stretch in game five where Chris didn't play for like eight consecutive minutes, and that was really detrimental to the Suns' offense. Though he had not been amazing to that point, it became even more clearly stagnant, and because uh, P.J. Tucker had a foul that put him in foul trouble, 
uh, Drew Holiday, who was normally guarding Chris Paul, was guarding Devin Booker. And as I think Kenny Kenny Beecham, King of the Fourth Quarter, said on his post game recap, I think he said that he put Booker in Alcatraz. And yeah, that pretty much sums it up. If Chris Paul was out there in those minutes, I think we would have seen a different offense. And being that that game ended as close as it did, that stretch without Chris Paul on the floor ultimately was probably the reason why they lost the game. Now, ultimately, it's not impossible that they win this series. They still have a 28% chance based off of those numbers, though again, the home court difference there. But if they go into game six and their offense is back to what it was in the first two games, Chris Paul has a really good game, Devin Booker is getting his offense a lot easier, DeAndre Ayton is getting some pick and roll opportunity, they're overall running more pick and roll until the uh, until Brooke Lopez is just played off of the floor and if their offense just comes easier and at least one of Middleton or Drew Holiday have a bad game as they had in the first two games they can win that game and then after that you're going to Phoenix for game seven so you're gonna have your home court advantage in the best and the most important game of the series so if you manage to pull off game six, I think at that point it becomes anybody's series. But game six, obviously it matters that you win that because it's an elimination game. But I think after you get that, you can take a little bit of a breath of fresh air because I think the odds are much more in your favor in game seven on your home floor than they are in game six on the opposing team's home court. So honestly, if I'm Monty Williams, I'm running my starters like 45 minutes each. And honest, and I don't see any reason not to because this is the game that you have to win. Um, yeah, so just more minutes for Chris Paul. Chris Paul playing better. Offense becoming more flowing and um, consistent. I complimented the Suns' offense and its consistency in the video talking about the problem with the Bucks, And then since then, their offense has not been consistent at all, and it's been very not flowing. So I guess I curse them. But yeah, they need to figure that shit out. Ultimately, it's probably going to be the Bucks that win this series. Just the numbers is on their favor right now. But yeah, that's it. Shout out to Rudy for editing this video, but that is the end of this video. Please be sure to like and subscribe for more NBA content like this, and keep the music.